Welcome, Hope Grown Faith, to another Monday Mom Mentor, where I can learn how to speak, <laughs> and where we are equipped and encouraged to nurture the hope of Christ in our home. And I apologize, my brain seems to not be connecting with my mouth today. But today, good thing you're not here to listen to me, because we're going to listen to Marnie Hammer, my <laughs> new friend who I met in January at a conference, and I'm so glad that I got to meet her. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marnie, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself to us. Yeah, I am waving to you from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I am a mom of three boys. They are freshmen in college at Ohio State, and um, I have a sophomore who just started driving, and I have a seventh grader. So very different stages, and this year, all three of them in new things, which, you know, is it's hard enough when there's one in a new thing, but all mm -hmm. three new things, that, yeah. Um, I've lost count on the number of years we're married because I'm not great at math. That's why I'm a writer, <laughs> but it's like 28 or 29. <laughs> it's in the, the middle between 25 and 30. We're not at 30 yet, but yes, <laughs> I am a writer and I also have just recently started to take classes to become a photographer as well. So I am learning all of the nitty gritty of shutter speed and aperture and ISO and I love it. So oh, that sounds so you're creative. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you're creative in many ways. <laughs> yes. And I'm finding it's really fun to turn from one to the other. When my brain is tired of words, then to turn to images. That's so refreshing. So I'm excited hmm. about that. Yeah. I feel like we could use a lot of that in our lives. Like sometimes we just get so focused on or even just focused on one kid and their problems and yeah. Turn to something else for a little while. And then a refreshment. You know, while we're yeah. doing something else that is refreshing, we go, oh, thank you, God. That was the answer I was looking for. And generally energized to go back to the other thing. It's great. That's right. I'm so glad that you're here today. So Marnie, here's a question that I like to ask everyone. How do you personally connect with God when you're busy? Because I know you're a Christian. I know you want to hear God's voice in your life and follow him. Yes. How do you practically do that in your life? So that is, it fits completely with my whole heart of, and maybe, maybe it's helpful if I tell you a little bit of the kind of my spiritual journey. Yes. Um, okay. So your question, I, I want to make sure I go back to staying connected with God in busy times. Okay. Let's make sure we get back there. <laughs> We're going to do it. Our brains are going to work. Um, so my spiritual journey, I grew up in a household where Jesus was a central part. My dad was my pastor and um, he was installed into his past first pastorship or first church the day before I arrived. So literally I grew up in the church and I understood and loved Jesus from a really early age. But I got caught up in this doing my spiritual walk mentality, and I missed the being. And so one of the things that, I mean, probably a best, best way to say it is I, um, I knew about Jesus, but I didn't know Jesus. I really think that describes my, like, I just loved him. But I was really caught up in checking boxes and doing all these things that I thought he'd be so proud of and that he would love me more because I was doing these things. And so, I mean, that kind of stayed with me most of my life. Um, our first son was born when I was, again, math, Christy, math. Sorry. I think I was 33. <laughs> <laughs> and how old am I now? 51. So yeah, that's, that's tracking. Cause he's almost 19. We're getting, okay. All right. Good job, girls. Yay. I can't check um, your map on that. I don't know the answer, <laughs> but it's interesting because he arrived at the same time that my spiritual life was like, because it was about that same time. It was after he was born that the Lord woke my husband and I up. We were kind of just walking out the shoulds and building the spiritual resume and we volunteered with the youth group. We thought we were doing the things we were supposed to do, but we weren't connecting with him in our hearts. And he woke us up through a really hard season in our marriage. And it was at that time when my little guy, he wasn't even one, right? We're going through a lot of change simultaneously. And so I was learning how to connect God with God 
after knowing him for all these years Mm -hmm. at the same time that I was a new mom. And Mm -hmm. so that I think is a really interesting overlap. And I thought we could talk about that a little bit because immediately I'm like, I need this in a way that I hadn't before. Mm. And so I was driven to figure things out. How am I going to sit with Jesus? Because I have this little guy. And at the same time, we were moving from Boston to Cincinnati. And so we, we had uh, a brand new location. We did not have family nearby. We, um, I chose, I had great jobs that I loved when we lived in Boston and we chose for me to stay home because the cost of living in Ohio is so different and it was finally an option. And we thought, well, let's see, I don't know, maybe, Mm -hmm. maybe. All right. And so I'm home by myself with this new little guy. At the time we moved here, he was 15 months old, Mm -hmm. full-time mom with him for the first time. Right. And desperate for Jesus, right? Like those things all converged. And so I was super um, needy, I think is a really good word to figure out ways to connect with God, even though so much of my time, there were no breaks, right? There was, Mm -hmm. it was, and then we had our second little guy and we had our third little guy and they're busy and whoo, right? So I found different ways that would work for me to connect with him. And in that season was also the same season that I learned that, um, that the Lord, when we listen, that he speaks back to our hearts, that we can hear him. And I didn't know that until this season. And I think it was honestly, that was how he had to meet me, right? My receptivity to hearing him was through a broken heart. My heart was open and I could meet him differently. And I wasn't in that place of doing and being perfect anymore. Right. Right. And so, um, to circle back, I was looking for ways to meet him. And I knew two ways that I could, um, that kind of fit in, in small chunks, because that's what we have in those early years. Right. And so I relied on looking for spaces when um, naps were happening. I really, I was like, okay, I have dishes and I could do laundry or I can sit with Jesus. And I have, you know, five days of the week, my husband's not in the home to help. So, okay, three of these days are Bible study days during nap time, right? Like I would figure out... The, the dishes and the laundry will happen. I know they will. That will happen. And so I chose which days are going to be the Bible study days during nap time. Now, there are days that naps don't happen, right? They're, that's just not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, <laughs> you to cry to remember the moments when I know. naps are done. <laughs> and the days that they gave them up, I remember trying quiet time in your room and that did not work. <laughs> I walked in and my it was my oldest. He had upended his mattress and turned it into a slide. <laughs> <laughs> that was very creative of him. It was fantastic. I'm like, there is no quiet happening right now. And plus also now things are breaking. So <laughs> so enough time. But I realized that in those moments, okay, I don't have to because I was one of those um preserve the nap time. Like that was, that was like sacred. And I knew like, okay, if they have a good nap, then we're also going to have a good dinner and we're, you know, like I was, Ooh, but when it didn't happen or when it stopped happening, I remember, and especially in cold days, I remember multiple times strapping them in the car seats and just driving. Okay. Because for whatever reason, there was no one to go see. I, again, I didn't have family nearby. And I would turn on music. I would have a, a movie on for them. And I'm just praying. And I'm just singing worship songs. And I'm just sitting with God while driving. And I did country roads because it was less decision making. <laughs> yeah. Straight. So, no right? Way. Like I'm, I went towards the country where the cornfields are. And I just drove. So it was just looking for creative ways to 
no, my kids are safe so that I can enter in with God from a place that is quieter and that I can, I can meet him. That's not to say he can't need us in other ways. Dishes are a sacred time. He has spoken over those gross dishes so many times. So there's lots of different ways, but I can encourage you that even car rides are a possibility. Yeah, I hadn't actually heard that one before. That's a great idea. Okay, that's good. You know what I was thinking while you were talking too is that it's so much harder to be a stay-at-home mom than we think it is. Yeah. Um, And like that for that, for you, that was like the thing that drove you to the desperation. Mm. That that constant, the child needs you all the time, especially when they're little, right? So yes, it is. There is nothing uh, easy. (laughs) It is not. It's not the like cop out. It is, it is a hard road to walk. And, mm-hmm. and I mean, there are hard roads to walk both ways, right? I mean, if you, it's hard, no matter. Mama, yeah, it is it's, you know, interesting that for you, that was the key yeah. that kind of pushed yeah. you toward God. Yeah. So then, How has, how did you find that God was shaping your parenting as he was shaping you during those times? So I think again, it sort of coincided where, okay, we don't know as much as we thought we did, right? Like we were married nine years. We're both working, no kids. It's going great. We're fine. We know this. We're all super perfect. (laughs) (laughs) We are so not perfect. We (laughs) found ourselves in a mess and we have a kid and this is a little scary, right? Like, oh no, Yeah, so we have consistently made prayer this, um, it's it's a focal point, it's a practice, it's a discipline, it's a family exercise, stopping to pray before we make decisions, before Mm -hmm. we discipline, um, just meeting with the Lord and trusting that he will show up and, um, guide what our next steps are. And so, I mean, that is a very short answer to how he's shaped it. And we can talk more about that, but, um, I can't imagine doing it any other way. Um, I will, I will share an example, um, because I know, especially when your families are young schooling, there's so many options for schooling, right? There's so many different ways. And as much as we know he's going to answer us through these words, schooling, specific schooling choices aren't covered in these pages. No, it doesn't tell you exactly where to go. (laughs) It really doesn't. And we had so many great options. We were part of a church where um, homeschooling, there were two different co-ops that met in our church to provide resources for homeschooling families. And then we had, we have two private schools less than half a mile from my house and our public elementary school is literally across the street we were surrounded by incredible options and that elementary school the public one was built in like 2004 or something like it's brand new and beautiful and so um that would be a great example that for for our first we were unsure how to walk this and we knew God can move in all of those scenarios. We needed Mm -hmm. to know what was right for our son because of how he's wired. And the Lord walked us through very specifically. He was at a um, Christian school and the Lord led us to move him to the public school. And it was clear and it was about Luke and it was about who he is, how he's wired, what he needs, where he's heading, what God was calling into. And that, so that to me was an example of like, that is not something that we could have done just reading and going for counsel to people who we admire and listening for their words. We needed to know because the Lord knows our son better than, than we do even. Yeah. That's a great example. And I mean, you said it was a short answer, but it it really isn't talking to God about major decisions in your life. That is something that not all of us do. In fact, you were just thinking about 
what we're going to do for high school. And I was like, actually, I haven't really prayed about that with my family yet. So we should do that. So th- I mean, I prayed about it on my own, but I should pray about it with my son who's yeah. directly impacted by this. So thank you. So yes. Oh, that's to exciting to too. Not be like for me, it was like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, it. Bernie. <laughs> Sometimes it takes that. I've had several just today. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, good. I'm glad it's not just me. So then <laughs> you've been doing this in your life. This is something that God is leading you to this, um, hearing from God. As you were talking about hearing from God in your heart. Can you tell me a little bit about like what that experience is like for you? I didn't prep you on that question, but now I'm oh, super curious. Like, this, I think it. that people always think, you know, you either hear an audible voice or it's just the Bible, but there's like, this is middle ground, other ways that God talks to us, but really like, how how would you describe that experience? Um, okay. So, oh, so many questions or so many answers, like (gasps) which sentence will be (laughs) (laughs) first? They're all like, um, so I'm going to share, um, Oh, which way do we want to go? So the first time I heard the Lord um, speak to me so clearly, so clearly, so clearly, it was, it was clear because I was actually sitting in church and um, the message that it was just such a compelling message. And I was so focused on the message and there was a thought and it didn't make any sense that it would have been me because I was listening to the pastor. Right. And it was just, and I can still, I can tell you exact word for word. I was like, Whoa. And it was just so clear that it was not something I, I created or came up with or thought myself because it was impossible. I would have, it didn't make any sense in that moment. Yeah. Right. Another time that I heard him, I was in the word and it was actually one of, it, it's kind of funny. I'll tell you, I, I was upset about a situation and I knew I needed to just go open my Bible and sit with Jesus. And I went out on my back deck and my backyard is not super private. My neighbors were out in the, uh, in their backyard. And I was like, is this like, I was going to talk to Jesus <laughs> and <laughs> they're <We're> there. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, so I'm going to actually just open my Bible and pretend I'm reading, but really I'm praying. This is what I'm doing, right? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And I open my Bible and it, I didn't care what I was opening to because I wasn't really going to read it. And it was Proverbs three, five, and six, trust not in your own understanding. Oh, I'm not going to get it right. But it we, and oh, help me. Um, Do not lean on your own understanding. Yeah. Your past. Yeah. You got so, it. Good job. <laughs> it was like, oh, it's like pressure, uh, right? Pressure of memory. Um, so I was like, look what you just did already. Like he knew I was coming out so desperate and my neighbors were, I mean, the enemy's not using my neighbors, but they created a little distraction. Let's just say that. Right. Yeah. And so he just started ministering to a verse that I randomly opened up to, right. It oh. was right there. And then it was my third son. He woke up early from his nap. There's a theme in this conversation. Okay. And I was like, Lord, I just needed to meet with you. I'm just so sad, but I'm going to go get this guy. And as I was going to get the guy, I just heard four words. And again, I was not in a place where I, I was, I was still like, it was clear. It wasn't a thought. I, I thought, does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I had similar experiences. Okay. Yeah. So does that answer the question you're getting at? Because we could go in a couple Mm -hmm. different directions from there too. Yeah. I think that definitely does. I think there's, there are times when you're like, oh, that, that doesn't, that wasn't me. (laughs) Like, like not, and not necessarily out loud. Although I do believe that there was one time that I heard the audible voice of God, but uh, that only one time in my entire 41 years. Right. So That's (laughs) that's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, he gets to choose how, and there are so many different ways. Have you read the book by, um, I don't know if it's Havila or Havila Cunnington. No, have you read what's it called? Book? I have it here. 
Let me pull a couple of show up. Created to hear God. Oh. This is pretty new. I think it came out in December. Oh. Um, November, December. Like it's very new. But she talks about how we're obviously created to hear God, as it says on the cover. But she talks about how we're wired to hear him. And there are four major ways. And I've done some huh. studies where there's, you know, Henry Blackaby, there's four ways. These are different from his ways. There's a lot of different resources that give us some frameworks. This was very different because she talks about how we could be a hearer, a seer, a feeler, and a knower. Yeah. And I love this. I love, cause she said, normally when we begin to listen for him, there's a primary way based on how we're wired that he'll meet us, but we're probably going to hear from him in all of those ways. Hmm. We're just learning to recognize his voice. And as we do, we'll hear him more and more in different contexts in different ways. So, um, but I love those four because when we hear someone talk about hearing him, we can easily compare and go, oh, I don't hear him that way. So am I going to hear him? Right. It can be discouraging. Yes. I've heard that exact same thing from people. Yeah. Yeah. And when then we don't feel very spiritual and we don't feel like we know him and maybe we're not as far along in our walk as we thought. And no, it's not that at all. It's that he's created us to meet with him in our way. Mm -hmm. And so when we trust and know and expect that he's going to speak to us, we'll start to uncover and recognize how he speaks to us differently from our, you know, best friend in Bible study or the mom down the street. It's mm -hmm. just different. That's so, so good. I've um, experienced a little bit of that through the sacred pathways idea from Gary Thomas. I don't know if you're familiar I with love that book. Styles. That's more about like how you kind of connect with God. It's less about the specifics of hearing God, but I do, I really love that paradigm of the hearing, the knowing, the feeling and the seeing, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't, I'm not generally a seer, but I will never say he won't speak to me that way. Mm. Right. Like he might. That is, that is the thing. We say, well, God doesn't talk that way. Well, why are you yeah. saying that about God? He can do whatever he wants. Exactly. <laughs> God can speak to you in dreams. He can speak to yes. you in your in your thoughts and through yep. pictures that you're like, oh, oh, that's exactly what I needed to see today. Exactly. Yeah. So are there any other struggles that people bring up if you, when you start talking about this? Yeah. Okay. So we just kind of talked about comparing as one struggle. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I mean, that's, that could definitely be a derail, derailer. Is that a word? Derailer? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think we just made it one. <laughs> it's a new I noun. It, we, it was exactly. a verb. <laughs> I think fear is huge and it can be different aspects mm -hmm. of fear. So I think one would be fear that I'm not going to hear him. Yes. I see that. Okay. In my so I'm going to you know, really press in and then I hear nothing. That's so frustrating and scary. Mm -hmm. And so should I speak to combating that? Do you want to spend time? Sure. On that? Yeah, that would be great. Cause you know, I think that's really pertinent even with our kids too. Cause I feel like that happens in my family. Yeah. Like they they well, haven't really actually, recognized his voice before. And so, so I think they're probably just like, well, probably just not going to talk to me again. Right. Right. Maybe that's not for me. Maybe it's yeah. not. Yeah. And I mean, my boys, obviously they they know that we seek him and we hear him. Two of mine haven't yet, but they know they will. Mm. And, and so I think that's that other thing. I think I said that a little bit ago, knowing that he speaks and then expecting him to, that's huge, right? Like those two steps are, they, they take us half the way to hearing him. If mm. we don't know and then if we don't dare to expect, then we we won't, right? But if we get those two lined up, that means we're posturing our heart to actually begin to listen and be really open, opening our hearts and ears to that. So I lost where I was going. Oh, so my, one of my sons, he's, he just, he has a very sensitive heart and really, really wants to hear the Lord. And he has heard the Lord say one thing um, to him. He said, he heard patience. And I was like, mm -hmm. 
how sweet is that right like one sweet word he's like I said hey he sees you and yeah. he gave you a promise <laughs> yeah. right like patience like it, it it absolutely will happen yeah yeah so, I feel like for some of them, like with my kids, they found it easier when they were really young. Like I remember doing some kind of listening prayer exercises with them. They'd be like, oh, God says he loves me. Or, But then as they get older, I guess that, that happens to all of us, right? We lose some of that, yeah. that acceptance, that ability to say, yeah, he, or that expectation. That's probably what we lose is the expectation. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, God is going to do this because this is just what God does. And then we start to be afraid that he's not going to, that we're not worth him talking to. Right. And then that kind of talks in our ear louder than God speaks. Exactly. Yeah. I think that Sacred Pathways book is really helpful because it opens our kids up. It opens us up to meeting him in context that maybe haven't been discussed at church, right? Like my favorite one in that book, I don't, I think he calls it the nat- naturalist. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. The outside. Walking in the woods. Yeah. Oh, right. Like I don't have to be sitting in my quiet time place. Right. Like I, he has wired us to meet different, to meet us differently. And sacred pathways talks about nine different ways that we can enter in to meeting with God. And if going to the woods is where I hear him then I'm going to the woods like that is amazing what freedom to know it can be in such a variety of ways yeah I was just thinking go ahead well I don't I don't want to segue us but I'm wondering like we I have this tendency to often bring an audiobook or something with me when I go for a walk and Mm -hmm. I wonder if that keeps me probably from hearing the voice of God because if I have these like you know these stories or podcasts always going in my ear how can I really hear what God is saying? Do I Mm -hmm. need to maybe intentionally spend some more time just in silence? Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It is. Cause it's, yeah, that's also a really good time to have uninterrupted. These are the podcasts that I haven't gotten to. Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. Like this one. (laughs) I so get it. Exactly. Exactly. So we were talking about fear. So Mm -hmm. we talked about what if I don't hear? I don't know if we really nailed it, but I think that goes back to just that sitting and knowing, right? No, yes, he speaks. It is a promise. Right. Seek and he will find. It is over and over and over. Um, and then expecting. Yeah. So there are times I don't hear him. Like I want to normalize that, right? Like, and I am really okay saying that out loud. And generally for me, I'm like, okay, it's just not his timing. Right. And, or it's a question that maybe I'm just not asking the right question and Mm. he's going to answer something else. Right. Because I'm standing on knowing he has. Right. So once you hear him, I think that's a really sweet place too, because then you can trust. Okay. I know he speaks and he didn't today and that's okay because there's something else going on and maybe it's just not the right time or maybe he's going to speak a different way or you know there's a variety of things that could be part of it but um wait I just lost where I was going oh the not hearing him fearing Mm -hmm. being afraid of not hearing him. yeah so it's okay do not stop that's what I want to say (laughs) that's so good yeah I'm I, I, that's something I can encourage my own kids with. Like when you were young, you heard the voice of God yeah. and he will speak to you again. If you're listening. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, and, but one thing I do tell them is like, God's not like, it's not a vending machine that you can just kind of put in your, okay, I'm listening now. Or like a jukebox, I guess would be more, a better description. God's not like, a, well, they don't know what a jukebox is, but that's true. <laughs> he's not like, he's not like Spotify where you can just turn them on and be like, okay, I'm listening to God now. This is um, it. Yes. Exactly. He's, he's got his own timing and his own ways and he's mysterious and he's not in a box and he's a, he's a wind and a fire and all yes. these metaphors. He's, but you can, what you can stand on is that promise that you said that when we seek, we will find. Yes. And we have to know when we say we're going to expect to hear him, we're expecting God to be God. We're not expecting X or Y or Z, right? 
that's very different, right? I know he'll speak and I'm going to expect him to be who he is. That's the expectation yeah. versus I'm going to expect him to say this because that's what I want to do. <laughs> or speak in this way or, yeah, yeah. I, that's good for me too as a parent because I'm always like, God, talk to them in like the way that I hear. <laughs> yeah. And he but, might it. Yeah. Yeah. His work. So that's good for me to remember too. He will speak yeah. to them when yeah. they're seeking. So our job is just to seek. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I like what you and said about the, the posturing. Yes. Right. It's, to, yeah. We're moving towards him in any, in any of these cases, that's what we need to do is move towards him. Mm -hmm. um, one of the fears that I think is also common is afraid. I'm, I'm afraid of what he might say. Right. Yeah. Maybe and, he's going to call me to be a missionary somewhere. Yeah. Like, Ooh, Ooh. Yeah. So, um, I think one of the things that if you haven't heard him yet, it could also be, um, a fear of a scary God, mm -hmm. right? Like, well, he might, he knows what I did and I, I don't really want to talk about it, which mm -hmm. <laughs> I get that. Right. And so I think, especially for our kids, knowing that the voice of God is always love mm -hmm. is that way to combat this fear of what is he going to say to me? Mm -hmm. um, that there is no guilt or shame that we will hear from our God, even in correction, there is no guilt or shame. Like when he has called me on things and you guys got to know, like, I'm not great at hearing that from people, <laughs> right? I get that. <laughs> I get that. Really hard thing. But when God calls me on things, I'm, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like I, oh, but I don't, I'm, I, it doesn't, I don't want to run from him in those moments, right? Like when his, it's, it's such a gentle correction because it's still in what is best for me. And in those moments, I know I can feel that I can feel, I just want this out of your way because of where I'm taking you not you should be ashamed of yourself right that's so mm -hmm. different and so knowing that when we show up and we're ready to hear him that we don't need to be afraid of what he's going to say that he's safe and loving and gentle and kind will open us to hearing him better mm -hmm. i don't have anything to add to that <laughs> <laughs> fantastic the missionary thing <laughs> yeah I, I was like what does that say about me but that's my like deepest fear <laughs> honestly I mean he asks us to do some hard things and he has asked us to do some weird things and it's never right now like well no I'm not gonna say that there was one time that he said go get these men some water these random this <laughs> in the grocery store parking lot there were these men it was a thousand degrees that day and they were working on a broken down truck in the grocery store or in the grocery store parking lot and I was like I heard I just heard go get them some water and I was like there is ice cream in the car and it is melting and I need, I need to get home <laughs> so that was a right now thing but things like that he's gonna give us lead time mm. and he's gonna speak through other people and he's you know there is there is going to be a process that he will work on our hearts and bring us around the corner gently. That is true. And that is something that I was talking with one of my kids about recently. Like, you don't need to be afraid. If God does call you to something, he's going to then equip you. He's probably going to change your heart so that you want to, right? He, yeah. He's not going to just be like, go do this thing that you are, that you hate. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. And out of the blue, right? Well, I mean, generally, I guess he did also ask Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. But for the most part... <laughs> I think we can trust God to <laughs> be gentle with us because he is very gentle. All right. Well, I just realized we're, we've been chatting for a really long time here. Oh gosh, fantastic. we did. 
Is, is there anything that you were like, I really wanted to say this and I didn't ask you about it yet. One little thing. Um, one of your questions that you said, um, is that, am I jumping ahead? No. Are we good? Okay. What is something small you can do at home that has a big spiritual impact? I talked to my husband about this, um, because I was like, it feels a little bit like we've had this impact on our kid, right? Like, I'm like, I don't know. Like, how do you answer this question without sounding like, we got this right. And I need you to know (laughs) we are so not perfect. We have said to our three boys consistently over the years, the first three counseling sessions are on us. Like we have not nailed this. Okay. But I would say the small thing that I pray has a lasting impact is that we I I keep seeing this picture of the friends who took the paralytic and lowered him through the roof to give him space with Jesus. And I said to Eric this morning, that's my husband. I'm like, to me, that's us because we love our kids more than those friends love their paralytic friend, right? Like we love them so much and we trust Jesus on their behalf. It's this picture, right? So I just kept seeing, like, we just keep taking them to Jesus. And that makes me want to cry over and over. We just take them to Jesus. That's our job. Yeah. Sorry. No, yeah. that is, no you can make me cry too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, yes. That is exactly like the ministry of someone like Million Praying Moms. That is exactly what they say. It's just, we just keep bringing them there. Yeah. Yep. Whether they can walk there on their own or not. <laughs> yes. And they're gonna, they're gonna, mm-hmm. yes. And, and we can trust that he's going to take his eyes off of, you know, whatever he's doing. I mean, <laughs> and look at them just like he would at the paralytic. He was probably in the middle of preaching yep. and he, he just turned around and, and there he is. Yes. Yeah. Direct attention. Yeah. Love that. Well, on that note, <laughs> Where can we find you online? Because I, I love this conversation and I'd love to hear more from you about this. Um, thanks for asking that. Um, I am at marniehammer.com and hammer is spelled A-R, but if you happen to type E-R, you'll still get there. And um, there is actually a resource there that might be helpful. It's um, a prayer planning worksheet. So it's kind of this preparation um, worksheet to repeat myself before you meet with the Lord to kind of walk through when am I going to meet with him? What space am I going to hold? Where am I going to sit? So I'm not interrupted. What is it that's keeping me up? And then what questions can I ask him? And Mm -hmm. so that could be useful for someone who really wants to learn to listen. This is a way to enter in and, and use some, uh, kind of a, um, it's, a framework for your prayer time. Oh, that's so, very helpful. That's available at marniehammer.com. And then I love to hang out on Instagram and it's just Marnie Hammer. And uh on Facebook I have Marnie Hammer Writer. Super. Yeah. Well I will make sure to link those so Thank that you. we can spell your name right. <laughs> Thank you. I know it's a little tricky. Because <laughs> I did originally write H A M M E R and then it was like, I mean why wouldn't you? <laughs> But it's good. Your name is not like a tool. It's not a tool. <laughs> <laughs> a tool for but the tool sounding like one. <laughs> yes. Okay, but that's fun for your boys. Yes, they love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Marnie. This has been really interesting and illuminating and just a really great conversation. Thank you. Thank you for the chance. I love it. It was an honor.